people might come in and say, holy cow, it looks like a school of fish. Yeah. Others come in and they say, oh, it's like the universe. This is like galaxies. Um, other people see cells or DNA. And uh, really the piece is intended to embody um, relationships of complexity, interdependence, chaos, which are really patterns that we see at all scales and in all places in the universe. Yeah. It would have been really easy to see this as a purely technical problem, get into the mind frame of um, a linear process of the technical steps to hang all these pieces of glass and to lose sight of that aesthetic creation. And really, that part of it, balancing form and color, is, what, is where the sculpture finds its life. Glass blowing is a really ancient art form, kind of invented by the Egyptians. But we use a technique that most resembles um, the technique the ancient Romans used. And so there's a ceramic crucible of molten, gla molten glass. We take hollow steel blowpipes, and um, it's kind of like gathering honey on a honey ball. You dip the tip of the blowpipe into the glass, turn, 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 and kind of scoop it. We're constantly turning to keep the glass on center. Mm -hmm. And I start blowing a bubble, then I start shaping the glass with my tools while my assistant, in this case my brother, um, keeps inflating the piece. We go for some color. We roll the hot bubble in powdered colored glass, which we buy from Germany. The real magic of this piece happens in the, the, after the final heat, the final set of moves. Yeah. And so what happens is I have a partially inflated bubble. I get it ripping hot in the mm -hmm. furnace. I come out and I'm kind of swinging it and dripping it. And just like that blob of honey wants to drip right to the ground, an inflated bubble will also elongate or become squatter depending on how gravity is affecting it. So I'm kind of teasing out this long bubble. Then I grab my shears and I grab onto the bottom of the bubble and I start stretching it. I hand off that blowpipe to my brother who leaps onto the bench. So Tucker is blowing, I'm stretching, giving him uh, guidance, hang a little bit more, blow a little bit more, stop. and. Um, it's this really fluid kind of jiggling into shape. Um, you need to really move the way the glass moves. And as soon as you stop moving like that, as soon as you become rigid and mechanical, uh, the glass will not do what you want it to do. So it was a, a good friend of mine, Craig Bunton, who helped me hang the pieces. Okay. And um, it worked really great with Craig because we have a lot of trust, we have great communication skills with each other, in part because we're rock climbing buddies. And so a lot of the same um, traits that make a good rock climbing partner also make a good assistant in hanging glass four stories up. Um, so the heights, the trust, the nonverbal communication was all really critical. What I would originally done was I planned out the overall form and color composition. Um, then I built, I assembled my building materials. So that was a long process of making the sculptural superstructure, um, blowing all the glass, and coming up with the whole um, hanging assembly. Then, when we're actually hanging, it's kind of like painting in space with glass. So we had this overall composition um, that we were shooting for, and it was a really painstaking process of moving pieces around, adding pieces, taking some away, to try to um, achieve the overall form and color composition that we'd planned, but also kind of the gestalt, the experience of movement and of flow and of growth, mm -hmm. which is um, really the essential property that I was trying to communicate.